Cuckoo! Welcome to Hex History. I'm Hex Tilda, and today we're going to explore the fascinating history of the Phrygian cap, a simple but powerful symbol of liberty that has been used by revolutionaries throughout history. The Phrygian cap originated in ancient Phrygia, which is modern-day Turkey. The cap was made of wool and was soft and floppy, with a pointed top that could be folded over. Uh, you can sort of see. There you go. It was worn as a symbol of freedom and was often given to slaves who had been freed. Throughout the centuries, you can see the Phrygian cap featured prominently in many pieces of art. Okay, so it's a noisy, beautiful day in Paris, and I am heading into the Louvre. Wish me luck. It's the first Saturday of the month. Tomorrow's Palm Sunday. People are here on Easter break. Yay. Uh, this is a mosaic from Syria dating to the 5th to 6th century CE. This is a mosaic from Turkey dating from the second half of the 4th century CE. It features an Amazon sporting a Phrygian cap in battle. That cavalier is attempting to snatch her hat like it's a bad wig. Okay, so this place is practically empty. The Louvre is insanely busy, but there are more employees down here than guests. The way into this area is not particularly obvious, so it is very easy to miss it. It's tucked away and honestly gorgeous. I'll put its location on a map up on the corner here. This is one of the accessibility points. It's in braille, in French of course, but also has raised textures to explain the details and what's going on. The actual vase is a rare hands-on experience in a museum. It lets the visually impaired appreciate the unusual texture of this your vase. Oh, hello, old friend. This next piece comes out of Roman era Egypt. So sometime between 30 BCE and 395 CE and is a piece with some personality. A space that is full of beautiful art and basically empty 99% of the time is a rare, delightful find. I now know where to go to chill and hide out if I need a break from the crowds. So Phrygian, Phryges, was a term used by the ancient Greek authors to generally describe the people living in Anatolia. A variety of peoples from this region regularly wore this type of cap, so the Greeks basically used it as a shortcut, a uh, visual shortcut, much like how a cowboy hat might modernly. It would let a person know that the character portrayed was from the East. Paris, Aeneas, and Ganymede are pretty consistently portrayed wearing one. This is Attis dancing, uh, a flower in his hand. Uh, love the reflection. So you can see Addis is wearing a Phrygian cap. Also check out the long tails on, on his cap. That's pretty awesome. Part of the fun of the Louvre is that there's also art on the ceilings. I would just need to be like really dramatic me too so i came all the way down that beautiful hallway uh ready to go visit the greek uh, section again all of the rooms are closed every one of them yay so i was admiring some of the art in this room and 
I realized, well, it's hard to read, but it says, there we go, uh, Pompeii, which is Pompeii. And you can see Mount Vesuvius getting ready for its uh, breakout roll. Okay, so I came out of my elevator to check out one of the statues down here, but we also have a pretty famous one over there. Yeah, it's not worth it for me to try to wrangle that entire situation. So when you turn around, there are quite a few wonderful classical pieces here. So mostly Greek. The statue of Paris of Troy is also a great example of a Phrygian cap denoting origin. We can see that the tradition of the Phrygian cap is still alive and well in the 3rd century in northern Syria. This is a funerary mosaic for a child who is sporting a red bonnet. It also makes a regular appearance in the 4th century mystery cult of Mithraism. Here's a link to learn more about it if you're interested. Legit mystery cult. Some interesting tidbits in there, for sure. And if Mithras isn't sporting a lion's head, he's wearing this cap. Typically while slaying a bull. So, we are now heading into one of the more understated, modest, plain areas. JK. You know what makes a bed really attractive? Extremely sharp corners. Okay. Now, let's jump ahead to the 18th century and the French Revolution. Here is La République, sporting liberty cap. She has human rights under her right arm and the law under her left. This figure is believed to have been a sketch for a temporary monument and dates to about 1794. Now, the Phrygian cap became a symbol of revolution and liberty. It was worn by revolutionaries called sans culottes who wanted to overthrow the monarchy. It was often paired with a tricolor cockade, which became the emblem of the French Revolution. It was worn by figures like Marat and Robespierre, and even appeared on the flag of the short-lived First French Republic. We're currently in the fifth, by the way. The cap was seen as a way to connect the revolutionaries to their ancient roots and their fight for freedom. Phrygian caps are regularly found on coats of arms and flags throughout Latin America. The anti-colonial revolutions were heavily inspired by the American and French revolutions. Now, I particularly want to draw attention to Haiti's coat of arms, which includes a Phrygian cap specifically because the country was founded by enslaved people who had rebelled and sought their own freedom. And yes, there is some wry irony in the fact that the French declared that they would not be treated as slaves, but still kept them at home and in their overseas territories until 1848. The history of enslavement in the ancient world, which was typically more like what one might think of as indentured servitude, where one could work to gain one's freedom, versus the brutality of Western European colonialism and slave trade, is beyond the scope of this video. I don't intend to 
diminish the nightmarish realities enslaved people suffered under colonizers and slave owners. Uh, I do recommend that you check out this video on the topic if you'd like to learn more about all of that from a person of color. Now, the Phrygian cap is still seen throughout modern France. Anyone who has gotten a postcard from me in the past two years has seen one. Heck, even the Paris 2024 mascots for the Olympic and Paralympic Games are adorable, extremely cute Phrygian caps. She is the personification of the French Republic and is often depicted as wearing a Phrygian cap. The cap is a symbol of the revolutionary spirit that led to the birth of the French Republic and the values of liberty, equality, and fraternity that it represents. All right, let's get back to the Louvre and the entire point of creating this cap. Eugène Delacroix painted Liberté guidant le peuple in 1830, mere months after the July Revolution. You can see Notre Dame de Paris in the background, and the street urchin wielding the pistols is believed to have inspired Victor Hugo to create the character of Gavroche in Les Miserables, which is set in the 1832 June Revolution. Not at all confusing. Now, this painting is in one of the two rooms you get funneled into after seeing the Mona Lisa. You can go admire the Raft of the Medusa, Liberty Leading the People, and Joan of Arc in one room, and see the coronation of Napoleon and the death of Marat in the other. Now, I was able to get a couple of quick photos in front of the painting while sporting my cap. Shout out to my spouse for managing to get a good shot despite the crowds. Ah, uh, the classic museum experience here at the Louvre. Okay, so there you have it. The fascinating history of the Phrygian cap. From its origins in ancient Phrygia to its use during the French Revolution and its continued importance in modern times. It's amazing how one simple hat can have such a rich history. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, of course, please be sure to hit like and subscribe, uh, strike the bell if you want to get notifications, and stick around for more Hexed History. A bientôt, mes amis!